What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Or welcome if your first time here. No doubt you heard about this train derailment, huge chemical spill in East Palestine, Ohio. It's a very serious situation, in my opinion, and the mainstream media isn't giving this the coverage that it deserves, and they're trying to have a mass cover-up, in my opinion, of what's actually happened here and the long-term effects of this train derailment and chemical spill. Now, a lot of people are asking me, do I think this is on purpose? Do I think it was deliberate? Because, you know, they had a movie that came out on Netflix, I think it was a year or so ago, called White Noise. That was in the same location. Even some of the people in this town here that has been affected by this train derailment and chemical spill actually had parts in that movie and if you look at the movie i've not watched it i've read about it but from what i can tell by what i've read and what people are saying the movie white noise that took place here in ohio in this proximity in ohio has really strange parallels to what's happening now with this chemical spill now that is definitely strange and a huge coincidence that this would happen in the same location that the movie took place could it be predictive programming could it be letting us know this is going to happen before the fact i don't know i'm not saying it was on purpose but it is kind of strange and it does send up a lot of alarm bells that the movie happened in this exact location train derailment chemical spill the same as in the movie now, the big question is, how far out is this going to affect people? I've read reports of poultry, chickens, falling dead in their coop 10 miles away right now. And they set this on fire, sending it up a huge, what amounts to a huge toxic chemical bomb into the air. And I saw video of this, and I saw pictures of this, where it's just black or the chemicals all in the air, up in the clouds. And you know those clouds are going to travel. They're going to release toxic rain, no doubt. I'm not a professional at this. I don't know, you know all about these chemicals and things, but common sense would tell you that setting that on fire and those huge black clouds going up, it looked like a nuclear bomb went off from what I saw. It's going to spread. It's going to spread out, and then it's going to release that back down through just water vapor, rain, or just releasing those toxic chemicals back down to the ground and the groundwater on people, on homes, on everything. And it's also going to be, obviously, in the topsoil, in the ground right there where the spill happened. And it could have been contained most of there, I think, but setting this on fire and sending that huge plume of toxic chemicals into the air, that chemical bomb, Definitely, in my opinion, it wasn't a good idea because it's going to send it up where it can spread out over larger areas. And, you know, some people would say also that was on purpose because there's no point in doing this. It doesn't make any sense to me. They might know more than I do about this. They might have some reason for this. But from what I've read, what I can see, other experts, I'm not an expert, but experts, have said that that wasn't a good idea to do that. And they did it. And you can see, you know, from the pictures in the video, that toxic cloud is spreading out and going for miles. Also, you know, in the, it's in the water. I've heard reports of fish, just tons of fish dead in the water. And that water obviously branches out into all the different rivers, spreads out, and it's contaminated, contaminated the rivers, the lakes, the streams probably the springs i don't know how long the time contamination will last what the environmental effects will be but common sense would tell you that that's in the water now because the fish have turned up dead and that water travels that water spreads and it's going to affect farmland you know all these rivers and streams and creeks they all interconnect so it could go pretty much anywhere now granted probably the further it gets away from the actual source of this chemical spill the less contamination that it will have. However, you know, those rivers go by a lot of farmland. That toxic cloud is going to spread out and release that chemicals onto the farmland. So who's to say that the farmland this next planting season is going to be fit to plant? What's it going to do to the pH levels? What's it going to do to the topsoil? How's it going to affect, you know, our food supply, our water supply, and the rivers, and the... It's... And even in the lakes, you know, if you sit in this 
toxic plume of chemicals up. It's a mixture of different chemicals up. And that spreads out. It's going to be released into the lakes, into the rivers, into the creeks. And it's already, you know, directly been released into the river. And that's spreading out now, as I sat here and talked about this on this video. So it's going to have huge environmental effects, I think, health effects, cancer, and things in the future. They're trying to downplay this because this company that's responsible for this is owned by the globalist corporations you track that back so they're shutting this down and they from what i've heard they set that on fire and released all those chemicals to clear that railroad to clear that railroad up quicker so they can start shipping again to make more money it's all about you know the profit but let's look at a couple of articles here that i pulled up that talks about this after Ohio train derailment, residents are living the plot of a movie they helped make. And you can see here this toxic, this plume of smoke here. And this is from the actual derailed train in East Palestine, Ohio, was carrying toxic chemicals. Then more, more toxic chemicals than first reported, EPA said. And you can see here, I mean, it is absolutely horrendous. But it is definitely strange that this movie happened here in this same general location, the same train derailment, chemical spill, environmental hazards. I mean, it is a lot of parallels to be just coincidence. Dead animals and reports of sickness as ecological disaster unfolds after Ohio toxic train derailment. You can see here, I pulled this up for some of the photographs to show you all. Here is a big mass of train cars. You can see these are the ones that carry the chemicals. The fire starting, big plume of smoke going up. Here are the chickens that were dead 10 miles away. You can see right here, dead 10 miles away. Fish, dead. There is, at the scene, all the train cars. That's after the burn, obviously. You can see the sludge on the ground here from all the chemicals. And you know it's gonna leach into the soil into the groundwater and when they set that on fire and that huge plume of a big bomb pretty much of chemicals that went up into the air into the clouds are going to spread out and travel long distances there's the chickens again one resident in the town of north lima around 10 miles from the train derailment reported that her six chickens died in the days after the fire because we released those chemicals into the air and it spread out 10 miles. And these chickens, you know, they got small lung capacity. So it didn't take much to kill those chickens. It was not the only report of sick animals. Taylor Hauser, I think it's what's pronounced, guys, a registered fox keeper who lives outside the evacuation perimeter, told WKBN that all of his foxes were sick and one had died. Dead fish were also observed floating in local streams, so it's definitely in the water. Environmental activist Aaron Brockowich criticized the EPA and state lawmakers for telling people it was safe to return to their homes and at the same time sending a legal notice to the rail operators over the threat of environmental contamination. This is why people don't trust the government, she tweeted on Monday. You cannot tell people that there has been and continues to be hazardous pollutants contaminating the environment while at the same time saying all is well. Guys, the government, the EPA, the big corporations do not give one crap about any of us. It's all about power. It's all about making money. They don't care about us. They don't care about the environment. It's all about making a profit. And guys, this from Newsweek. Ohio train derailment could become full-blown ecological crisis. Uh, yeah, for sure. I'm gonna, I got this muted because I want to get copyright strike, but we'll play some of this to show now what's going on here? I mean, look at that. I mean, just look at that. Going up into the clouds, up into the sky. I mean, look at the sky. That is absolutely horrendous. And there's the start, you can see here. Controlled burn. Yeah, that was a bright idea. Really bright. Black smoke in the air. I mean, look at that. This is the puppet governor here in Ohio saying, all is well, all is well. I mean, look right here. You can see 
that black. I mean, look at that. It looks like a nuclear bomb went off. Spreading out. Use a chemical weapon in World War One. The cocktail of toxic chemicals released as a result of the Norfolk Southern Railway train derailment in Ohio may lead to serious environmental damage. Uh, yeah, no shit. Fish have turned up dead in streams, pets have died, and residents have reported experiencing symptoms associated with exposure to toxic chemicals following derailment of cargo train of the following the derailment of a cargo train near East Palestine, Ohio, on February the third. The derailment of a train of about 150 cars, 20 of which carries hazardous material, caused a large fire. To avoid, they set it on fire. To avoid a massive explosion, five rail cars carrying vinyl chloride were breached, which you knocked a hole in them, by emergency responders. The chemical diverted into a trench and burned off, and you set it on fire to clear it up more quickly. Because they cleared this up, you know, the way they should clear this up, it would have took months to remove that ground, that topsoil and everything, clean it up the, the way it should have been done. And still, yet there would have been environmental hazardous, in my opinion, because it already got into the water. But by burning this like that, definitely released it into the air and made it go over a far larger area than what, would, what it would normally went over. At the time, officials warned this would send toxic gases Prostrogen and hydrogen chloride into the atmosphere and ordered an evacuation of the area in Ohio and Pennsylvania. Officials said when announcing the end of the evacuation order that the levels of toxic gases were at safe levels. Of course they did. Even when registered at the crash site. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine described air quality readings as basically similar to what they would have expected prior to the train wreck. So he's saying it's back to normal. Everything is good. It's just the way it was before. That's like it never happened. Local residents, however, have complained of headaches, burning eyes and noses, as well as sore throats. Vinyl chloride is a colorless and highly flammable gas that is used to make polyvinyl chloride PVC plastics. It is considered a carcinogen and decomposes after exposure to sunlight to make toxic fumes such as formaldehyde. It has a sweet smell and can lead to a range of health problems if inhaled. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, breathing very high levels at can cause someone to lose consciousness or even die. Workers who have been exposed to vinyl chloride over long periods have been known to develop agicorsinoma, I don't know if it's pronounced correctly or not, guys. That's not a word in my vocabulary. Of the liver, cancer of the liver, a rare and aggressive form of cancer, liver cancer. In animals, some studies have found that the growth and development of the fetus is impacted by vinyl chloride exposure. So, abortions, pretty much, miscarriages. Vinyl chloride affects cardiovascular development, liver, and immune system, and it is considered to cause a variety of different cancers. A. Daniel Jones, a professor of biochemistry at Michigan State University, told Newsweek, Vinyl chloride is a gas at room temperature and ambient pressure, which means it can readily be transported through the air and potentially over long distances over a few days. So, it transports through the air over long distances, over a few days, and they set this on fire, sending the big plumes of this up into the air. I would expect that it would break down in the atmosphere by the effects of sunlight. I wouldn't suspect, but could generate other toxic intermediary in the processes. Another word that's not in my vocabulary, guys. Glass said that chemicals in the soil could remain there for long periods of time. Chemicals in the soil, big plume goes up in the air, spreads it over farmland, goes, comes back down, stays in the soil for long periods of time, and seep in the groundwater, but would also continue to volatize, i.e. become a vapor, leading to further air contamination beyond the initial controlled burn. All these chemicals are an issue on land, water, and air. 
and they are definitely in all three, unfortunately. Ohio EPA Representative Kirk Kohler said, the levels of toxic chemicals in nearby rivers, including the Suffer Run, were immediately toxic to fish. Other nearby rivers, including Little Beaver Creek and the Ohio River, are currently being monitored and Norfolk Southern contractors have installed a dam and a water bypass at Sulphur Run to stop the contamination spreading further and also to prevent more chemicals entering the stream from the derailment site, the EPA said on Friday. Yeah, they're going to be able to put up a, a dam to stop any chemicals leaching out into other areas of the other rivers and other areas. You know how hard it is to stop water from leaching out, especially if you're trying to do it quickly like this right here. Something happens, you build something to try to stop that very quickly. And you have it in the air also in different streams already. It's not going to help. It's not going to prevent this, in my opinion. Hazardous compounds formed in the fire or released directly into the air, however, will have been deposited into the local environment with potentially long-term effects. They say it right here, and this is from Newsweek. Hazardous components formed in the fire release or released directly into the air, however, will have been deposited into the local environment into the local environment with potentially long-lasting effects. So they know this is going to be long-lasting in the environment, people's health, to the food supply, and they are trying their best to cover this up because they want you to know about this. National Cancer Institute. Vinyl chloride. In the environment, the highest levels of vinyl chloride are found in air around factories that produce vinyl products. If, water, if the water supply is contaminated, vinyl chloride can enter household air when the water is used for showering, cooking, or laundering. Vinyl chloride exposure is associated with an increased risk of, the, of a rare form of liver cancer, hepatic anthracarcinoma, maybe it's worth pronounced, as well as primary liver cancer, brain and lung cancers, lymphoma, and leukemia. So look for these to definitely increase, but it's going to affect, in my opinion, the food supply. And this is a huge disaster trying to cover this up because of who's responsible for this. They're going to clear it out as quickly as possibly can, burn it off. They know it's going to cause cancer and things later on. Possibly be really detrimental to the food production here in the U.S., the rivers, the waterways are drinking water. It remains to be seen how serious, it's definitely serious, but it remains to be seen how serious this is going to actually be for everyone around the country. Hopefully, there's so much time, there's so many things going on, guys. It is horrendous. So many things happening. It's disheartened. It really is disheartening. Discouraging. We try to pray up. We try to be prepared for these things, but it just keeps coming and coming and coming, and even things that we don't think about keeps happening i don't know guys it does give the importance this it does show the extreme importance of being prepared of being ready to bug out you know people talk about bugging out to the forest to live that's not the purpose of a bug out having a bug out planned supplies ready to go is for cases like this right here train derailment you get out of that as quickly as possible to avoid as much of this as you possibly can. However, like I said, this is going to spread. It's already spreading from this immediate area. We've already had poultry dead 10 miles away from the air pollution, the chemicals into the air. The chemicals was used in World War I for chemical warfare. And if you set this on fire, send this huge toxic bomb into the air, it's going to attach to the clouds, the moisture in the clouds are going to move over the country and spread out. So, who knows where it's going, to, how far it's going to go, what the result is going to be, but I think it's going to definitely affect the food supply. So, you know, like always, it's good to have a good stockpile of food stockpiled, a bug out bag in case this happens where you are, you need to get out as quickly as possible. You want to have that ready to go because you want to be trying to, you don't want to be trying to, you know, figure out what you need to pack up, getting things ready and to be able to grab that, get in your vehicle and go. Having chemical suits, gas masks could definitely be, could have been usable for people here. When this happened, they could have put on their chemical suits to keep this from getting on their skin, their gloves, their chemical biological gear, their, and headed out. You know, I'm at a loss of words for this, guys. This is so depressing to see this happening. And to know 
what the effects is going to be to people in the future, to animals, wildlife, to environment, topsoil, groundwater, people's health, people's reproduction. What do you think in the comments below, guys? Do you think this is going to be a huge issue? Do you think it is a huge issue? What have you seen if you're living close to this area? Did you have to evacuate? What did you see? Let us know in the comments below. I thought the video was helpful. Give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. The Creek More Matter here. I'll see you guys next video, hopefully.